You spoke about the ruby ant hump. Well, I've read it, and it agrees more with my philosophy of life than with yours. Uh, it does. Listen. What without asking hither hurried whence? And without asking whither hurried hence? Uh, I see. Oh, I... many a cup of this forbidden wine must drown mm. the memory of that insolence. Great. Great. That's the keynote. Insolence. He could not have used a better word. I see. But it's not exactly, it's not in the nature of life that goes. It's not the a, nature of life to be otherwise. Life, when it knows that it must cease living, will always rebel. It cannot help itself. No, the preacher no. found life and the works of life all a vanity and vexation, an evil thing, but death. The ceasing to be able to be vain and vexed, he found an eviler thing. Through chapter after chapter, he is worried by the one event that cometh to all alike. So Omar, so I, so you, even you. For you rebelled against dying when Cookie sharpened a knife for you. You were afraid to die. The life that was in you, that composes you, that is greater than you, did not want to die. You have talked of the instinct of immortality. I talk of the instinct of life, which is to live, and which, when death looms near and large, masters the instinct so-called of immortality. It mastered it in you. You cannot deny it. Because a crazy cockney cook sharpened a knife. You are afraid of him now. You are afraid of me. You cannot deny it. If I should catch you by the throat like this, no, 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 please, and begin no. to press the life out of you like this, your instinct of immortality will go glimmering, and your instinct of life which is longing for life, will flutter up, and you will struggle to save yourself, Please. huh? Please. No. I see the fear of death in your eyes. You beat the air with your arms. You exert all your puny strength to struggle to live. Your hand is clutching my arm, hump. Lightly, it feels like a butterfly resting there. Your chest is heaving. Your tongue is protruding. Your skin is turning dark, your eyes are swimming to live, to live, to live. You are crying and you are crying to live here and now, not hereafter. You doubt your immortality, huh? <laughs> You're not so sure of it, you won't chance it. This life only, you are certain, is real. It's the darkness of death, the ceasing to be, the ceasing to feel, the ceasing to move, that is gathering about you now, oh, descending upon you, rising around you. My voice sounds faint and far, and still you struggle in my grip. You kick with your legs, your body draws itself up in knots like a snake's. Your chest heaves and strains to live, to live, to live. When I woke, he was looking at me, smoking a cigar, curiously. Well, have I convinced you? Here, take a drink of this. I want to ask you some questions. Your arguments are too forcible. You'll be all right in half an hour. And I promise I won't use any more physical demonstrations. Get up now, you can sit in a chair. And then, toy that I was of this monster, the discussion of Omar and the preacher was resumed. And half the night we sat up over it, 